Now, where is it appropriate to use real subdivisions and kind of these fake preview subdivisions? Uh, when we're doing hard surface modeling, it's much nicer just to use dynamic preview because you don't really have to commit the subdivisions. Uh, when you're sculpting on a face, it's probably better to like actually divide the geometry up. For example, if I turn dynamic off, and I go over here to geometry and I start hitting divide. We can divide, we can divide, we can divide. I'm giving me subdivision history. So I can take this slider and go back to subdivision level one, subdivision level five, and also I'm getting more points to play with. So if I go into my standard brush, BST, and start sculpting on this object, let's go ahead and turn polyframe off here. You're gonna see as I'm sculpting, I'm getting pretty good resolution on this side anyways. Uh, but because our resolution is kind of all over the place because we've put in edges kind of everywhere, uh, it's not very even resolution. You're gonna see as I go from this side over to this side, it may not be super obvious, but if I go back to subject level one, you're gonna see these squares over here are very large, and then these squares up here are very small. So in fact, let's go ahead and delete higher. Let's go back into B, Z, M. I'm gonna make this even more obvious. I'm gonna go insert single edge loop, and we're gonna insert a bunch of edge loops in this area, and then these ones are gonna be super sparse over here. So now if I hit control D, and subdivide these up. Now I can sculpt across the surface and we're getting a lot of resolution here. And then as I go over here, you're gonna see it gets really bad. That's because our geometry distribution is uneven. And we're gonna get find ways around this, but essentially the geometry underneath our object is gonna determine the resolution. And this goes for poly painting as well later on. And that kind of makes sense. You know, the more geometry you have in a single area, the more geometry you're gonna get when you subdivide. And then the less geometry you have in other areas, it's not gonna subdivide as high res as other areas. You can use this to your advantage in some instances, but for the most part in ZBrush, you want a nice even geometry surface so that it's predictable as you're going across different areas of it. You're not caught off guard sculpting detail in one area and then going to another area and being like, oh geez, I can't get any detail. So you're object is a little bit unmanageable in that way. Now let's go back to an object that might make a little bit more sense. So we're gonna click on our face here. We're gonna zoom out a little bit. So this is the object we're sculpting on. I'm gonna switch back to our matte cap gray. And on this one, I'm gonna take the undo slider and we'll go back to where we were messing with his head too much here. There we go. If you're just joining us, we essentially just made a sphere 3D, dragged on our canvas, go into edit mode, make poly mesh 3D, and then start sculpting. And of course we oriented ourselves in space by going Z forward, Y up. So here's the forward part of our space, our face here. And we also under transform, we have activated symmetry across the X axis by tapping the X key. So now we can sculpt on both sides of our object. Now, previously we talked about move and snake hook. So I'm gonna use my move brush. And again, we're just gonna really hit okay. We're gonna really make some big changes. And you can see already as we're making these big changes and I'm tapping S to make my brush size large and we can make these polygons really stretch out. You see, as we do that, if we turn on polyframe, Two problems. Number one, this sphere we started out with had polarized caps. So if we switch back to our standard brush, BST, and we start sculpting, it's gonna sculpt like this, and when we get towards this, it's just gonna turn into like a pinched point. Not great to be sculpting on a surface with polarized caps. So we're gonna fix that in just a minute. And another thing you're gonna notice is as we move this, like this nose, like we're gonna make it look a witch. So really big nose here, really big chin. This is gonna be kind of our spooky witch here. So as we pull these polygons out, we're getting really, really uneven distribution of geometry. Right through here, it's really nice and small and square. And then over here, they're getting big, long rectangles that are gonna be really hard to sculpt on. In fact, I can sculpt pretty detailed up here. And then as I go here, it's just gonna turn into nothing. If I continue to subdivide, like if I divide this up to get more resolution, I'm able to go through here and start fine tuning my object. Like through here, we can put in a little fold and then we can start adding lips here maybe use our clay brush to kind of soften this cheek out a little bit. But then if we go into our nose and start sculpting and I want to like put in a nostril or something or maybe a wart on this side, I just, I can't do it. Now I can put a wart over here, no problem. I can put warts on all day and they turn up fine, but on the nose, the geometry is just way too unevenly distributed. Now, one thing I can talk about, let's go down to subject level one, let's delete higher. Let's turn on our polyframe here. There, there are things you can do. Um, I'm gonna skip ahead a little bit to talk about masking. So if you hold down control, we're gonna be a mask pin. If you just hold down control and then uh, click and drag on your document over the nose part of your mesh here, you're gonna see we're gonna mask out, or I'm sorry, mask this area here. And if we wanna invert this mask, what we're gonna do is hold down control and tap in our document. And again, I know I'm jumping ahead. We'll get the more in-depth masking later. But if this area is unmasked, you can hit divide and that'll 
it's subdivided locally, this area. So if you control drag in your document, and then you turn off polyframe, you're going to see this geometry distribution is a lot more even. So that's one way to do it. Another way to do it is zero measure, which we'll get to a bit later. 